Now that we know the abilities to modify and research genetics to such a level is in existence, the question is raised whether or not we should use the technology at hand or not. This is a question that can only be answered on an individual or moral basis. As you might know, I care deeply about stem cell research. In Missouri, you can elect Claire McCaskill, who shares my hope for cures. Unfortunately, Senator Jim Talent opposes expanding stem cell research. Senator Talent even wanted to criminalize the science that gives us a chance for hope. They say all politics is local, but it's not always the case. What you do in Missouri matters to millions of Americans. Americans like me. While some, like Michael J. Fox, are strongly supportive of genetic research, others are just as strongly opposed. Several people go with this technology with the if God wanted us to fly, he would have given us wings approach and believe that any type of genetic research or genetic change is immoral and wrong. But some simply see the potential dangers involved in genetic engineering. For example, if the genes of a cow were altered to produce more and higher quality milk, what could some of the effects be on humans who drink the milk? Even if it's not right away, what if this gene modification sparks some sort of mutation cycle that makes the product toxic to ingest eventually? Another example being the engineering of plants. Once again, what could the possible effects be of the humans eating the genetically modified produce? For that matter, what consequences could the new breed of plant have on its surrounding environment? How many other plants and animals could it affect? More importantly, what if humans went too far and created a plant that could think on its own and in turn took over the world? Okay, maybe not, but the possibilities are vast. Along the same lines of reasoning, what's to stop a terrorist, or even ourselves for that matter, from using this technology as a means of a weapon? What if a type of cancer were harnessed in a virus or bacteria and released on the enemy? The results could be cataclysmic. Now, scientists do offer some protection from issues like this by creating a fail-safe factor in the modified genes of the lab to make them completely unable to survive conditions outside the lab. Even this method isn't completely foolproof. While it is only a film, Jurassic Park does have an interesting example of how this fail-safe factor does have its sources of error. You know what this is? The dinosaurs are breeding. But my grandpa said all the dinosaurs were girls. Amphibian DNA. What's that? Well, on the tour, the film said they used frog DNA to fill in the gene sequence gaps. They mutated the dinosaur genetic code and blended it with that of frogs. Now, some West African frogs have been known to spontaneously change sex from male to female in a single sex environment. <laughs> Malcolm was right. Look. I found a way. Now, I'm going to throw out a few situations and maybe it'll make it clearer why some people are so against genetic modification of any kind. Say you have a fatal heart issue, and you have the option of engineering an embryo or a clone from which you could retrieve the proper elements to save your own life. But the question is, who's to say your life has a higher value than that of the embryo? Another situation could be a baby dies and the parents are desperate to engineer a clone of their child, but is it morally correct to create another human being? Scientists can create a working body, but can they engineer a soul? Once again, all of this lies on your own beliefs and opinions. There's no clear-cut answer to any of it. And now comes the issue of engineering genes to manifest a specific desirable trait. Tell me, who exactly is to decide what a desirable trait is? It gives an example in your textbook of people who wish to eliminate aggressiveness. But couldn't it be argued that aggressiveness is essential to some aspects of life? An attempt to stamp out some traits implies that there are some human beings inferior to others, and this would create quite an uproar. Of course, some desirable trait that scientists wish to engineer into humans could include strength and intelligence, which seems like an advantage. But in the long run, couldn't the same methods be used to work in the opposite way? While it may sound absurd and futuristic, just like they could engineer people to be so much smarter, what's to stop scientists from modifying humans to only follow orders and get things done? I mean, doesn't the world need those people too? People can be so easily corrupted, 
you can see where such modifications can be very dangerous. Now sure, on a grand scale it may seem that some protesting is justified, but most people don't understand why people protest just the little things like engineering plants to glow in the dark for example. I believe this is reliant upon the give them an inch and they'll take a mile philosophy. No compromise can be afforded. The grand things have to start somewhere, and it seems they can be prevented by preventing even the, little, the smaller things. The technology does exist, but the question remains, is it right to use it?